All right, guys, you know it's going to be a good video when it's my third attempt at making a video about the same sport in the day. So I've had a lot of practice at this video already today. We're going to talk about the NBA algorithm, and we're going to talk about what round robin wager I'm going to make today on NBA. I'm going to make one. I'm not following anything else, not live betting. I got other stuff to do tonight. Be watching hockey probably, actually. Um, so I have $30 as a budget for the day on a round robin that I want to pay at least 500 and hopefully more. Okay. If I can get everything right. And I also want to get a payout. If I don't get all my picks, right. Let's say I do, you know, a bunch of different, let's do I do seven picks or let's say six picks. Cause it's kind of a lighter scheduled night. If there's six picks and all of them are minus 110, for example. Okay. And I have $30. The extreme thing is to play the parlay, which you're not going to hit hardly any of the time, but that would pay 1400 bucks, but you can't really do that because you lose one game and you get zero. This is what your payout is done. You end up with nothing. So you have to distribute that $30 out differently. I oftentimes do it. You know, if you go $1 backwards, fours, fives, and sixes, you $22, $32, Twenty-eight, thirty-two. Right, you're getting close. Twenty-nine. There we go. There you go. So here you have about thirty dollars, and what that gives you is a payout of three eighty-three if these are all minus one ten. So you can see kind of what we're working with. If we're working with six six picks, and we're going to create them right now, we're going to get lines on them. And we're going to see how we can do better than that with a distribution where it's weighted toward us getting more correct. But if we have a good night, we have a good night. And if you have a bad night, you're going to lose almost everything or everything, depending on how you structure this. Although if you got two right, you get something back, depending on if we do six picks or not. Let's go through the picks. So I already reviewed the video, uh, reviewed this um, breakdown frequently and, and talked about it multiple times. So I have a pretty good idea of what to tell you. The Celtics line has moved and gotten worse throughout the morning. This is because Orlando, I guess, is injured and the Celtics are better. And the spread no cover number here, the projected score is just really giving it heavily to Boston, which makes this a very, very difficult game to wager on because putting minus 375 lines in your algorithm or in your uh, minus 375 lines in your round robin is going to... I mean, it's going to really not get you paid at all, right? Even hitting six, you you barely more than double your money, right? Like 142%. So you can't be betting lines like that in round robins. It just doesn't pay for the days. You got to put your money to work. Basically, you don't want to get paid almost nothing, even though they probably win. So do you take the minus nine? I say no, because teams don't play to win by nine points. They play to win games. And so I don't like putting picks like that in my round robin. So there's nothing to do in this game um, other than potentially do this at a terrible line. Uh, if there's nothing else to do, maybe you consider adding it on if you desperately need another pick. Milwaukee and Houston. So here it made me want to look through injuries and you really want to go through the injury sheet. And I've sorted the injury sheet by team right here. And what you want to look at is you want to look at what their uh, P score percentage is. You know, we can give this thing a, a bar or something to, um, I won't do a color scale as much as I'll just do like a data bar. So you can see like Chris Middleton is a really impactful player overall. Uh, and he's out, completely out of this game. And Connaughton is, is also pretty impactful. These are, these are fairly high numbers for players as you can see by the, by the bar, right? So Milwaukee has, injuries and when we go back to our pivot here well they're favored by 12 and a half points like when you see crazy lines like this you're like is this really deserving are they really going to do this like i mean well when you see those kind of injuries we're now like all right well let's double check houston's injuries because houston is also only at 88 percent. so if we find houston in here you can see they're right here and you've got uh, just Sean Tate is the most impactful with an ankle. These are all game time decisions. These are not outs already, right? Those other guys were out on Milwaukee. Like they ain't coming back today. They come, they're coming back till November. They come back till college basketball season. So in this sense, you can see how Houston is somewhat healthier. And so that is like, I mean, the sharp 
opinion of what is happening here is Milwaukee is overestimated with guys that are out because they generally probably would be Houston by a ton if all the guys were in. And this is not deserving, and it's probably a closer game. Even, you know, I, I, so I, I'm going to take Houston plus 12 and a half, and I'm going to look on, on my phone to get the exact line. But this is acceptable for me. Even though Milwaukee is way up here, I'm okay because of the game time decision injuries on the Rockets, guys. And, and that's, that's just okay with me. So this is Rockets plus 12.5, it says. And I can even consider alternate points to get a better line. It's they're actually plus 13 at minus 110. That is happening. I just clicked a button. All right. So that's number one, and it's because of injuries changing the outlook on that game enough to, to have them cover a lot of points. I'll be on the other side of the points, you know, I'll be on the plus side of the points, not the minus side. Denver, Oklahoma City, healthy teams, Denver, heavily favored says they cover the spread actually says they really actually do well denver did they did they beat golden state yesterday i think they did they want no wait a minute where's the final score they did they did 120 and they over the up they did the algorithm put golden state way down here and sure enough the upset happens six percent margin so Denver coming off a win last night, upsetting Golden State. So tonight, they are favored heavily against a much weaker team in Oklahoma City. Uh, once again, you have seven and a half points and a terrible line to deal with, which makes it not bettable, unfortunately. Um, I mean, if you do one parlay where you throw all these guys together to try to double your money, you know, or something, it is Boston, it is Denver. You can see it's not Milwaukee. It's Boston, it's Denver. But but I don't put them in my round robin because it's just not enough action for me. And maybe that's why I don't win more steadily in every day is because I don't play games like this. But you can do whatever you want. I know people that play the points on these games, and I think they probably win them about 50% of the time because that's what's going to happen in that situation. And that's just not enough for me. So. The Clippers are minus 144 against Sacramento. Both teams healthy. This line's acceptable at a margin of 11%. That is acceptable. Now, let's see if that line has changed because I haven't looked at that game recently until just now. And the answer is that they are still exactly minus 144. That's cool. That's cool. We'll take it. All right. So that's a pick we are taking. Next, we have an injured Indiana against an injured Detroit. Even money, but an 11% margin. So we're going to double check injuries on both of those teams. Uh, really? Is this, is this going to change this rest thing? Did they, are they resting? How long are they resting? What's going on there? I want to know news about this. Why are these guys not playing? Because they just played and they have no rating. So they haven't played yet, right? But they're supposed to be back tomorrow. Interesting. Okay, so the Clippers are choosing to rest a couple people. What about Detroit? Uh, out in two game times, and Burks is pretty good. Badgley's, Bagley's definitely out, and Isaiah Livers, hip suck. Um, game time decision. The foot is probably okay, I always think. Uh, so Burks comes back in, gives up one more back for Detroit, right? Which might bring that, or sorry, but to, so not Detroit. I should be looking at Sacramento. Sorry, right? What are we talking about here? Hold on, I'm lost. But no, we're doing Indiana and Detroit, not the Clippers in Sacramento. Okay, that's why there's, sorry. Very interesting thing just happened there. So the Clippers are at 100% because those guys have not played yet that are still out resting. John Wall and, um, yeah, John Wall and, uh, and Ka Kawhi Leonard. Ka 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 Kawhi, Kawhi Leonard? Uh, I'm probably, I got to hear them say that name more. All right, so, so, okay. So let's get back to what I was doing or trying to do, which is Indiana and Detroit. Um, now, with Detroit, bad 
Bagley's out. Burke's probably playing in okay and questionable here. So they're getting maybe a little bit of those injuries back. What about Indiana? Indiana's one we care about. These are two game time decisions and an out. Miles Turner, good player, definitely out. So one of the players, definitely out. Face. Your face going to be all right, Jalen? I don't know. And knees I worry about. So maybe they get Jalen's face back. So a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. I feel like this is still about even, and there's an 11% margin here. And Indiana's home. And the line is pretty good, so we're going to do it. It's really that 11% margin you should care about the most. It's over 10 and you want to get games that are over 10% margin whenever you can at reasonable lines because the NBA algorithm is that awesome. It just, it just is. So can we get that line on the phone? That's the question. And the answer is they're now minus 104. So they are now minus 104. All right, three down. What else we got? Memphis and Dallas. Memphis injured, but they've been playing injured the first three games. They're an underdog at 6%. So the, the common consensus growing lo logic about this is that we're going to look at the injury report in a second, but the, the common consensus is when you get an underdog down here, now the margin is starting to get iffy. So now we're starting to get an iffy zone, but we can get five and a half with them. And so it says they win and we can get five and a half. So really we're supposed to do that um, almost without thinking about it unless these injuries are really profound. What are they? Memphis's injuries are three outs in a game time. Yikes. And the game time's a thigh, which probably plays. And he's 41% though. Dylan Brooks is pretty good. So if Dylan Brooks plays, you're still out. Jaron Jackson, well, are there any other injury situations on Dallas? Hardly any. Out and not this game time decision probably means he's out actually. Um, so and then there's ankle out. So these people are out. So they're a little short stacked. And Memphis, I don't know if they have been playing with those same injuries yet or not, but they have been winning. Okay enough to take them five and a half because they are winning. Uh, they have been doing this while injured, still winning. So I'm going to take that with the points. Let me take a look at that. So that is Memphis plus five and a half is minus 110. So this is Memphis plus five and a half is minus 110. And we are up to four. Next. The Heat and the Raptors, about the same in injuries, 5% margin, but only minus 135. And they're home, and they I shouldn't use recency bias, but they just ruined me two days ago against the Bulls, who then turned around and lost to the Wizards. So I, I, I can see this. Here I'm going to start to let you know that games down here are more toss-up games. As you can see from yesterday, if I go back and look, you'll see the losses happen right around, right around the zone. And so we're going to not take the heat because it's too close to call. We don't want to really be losing picks on our round robin. We want a lot of confirmation on our picks. So what do you do here then? You have the Sixers and the Spurs. Well, this is Berserkistan down here. This is minus 900 for the Sixers where everybody's healthy. The Sixers are at home. What is happening here? It says this is like a three-point game and the margin's super low. So it's essentially a no-brainer Spurs plus 13, but I don't know why this is the case. And San Antonio just won last night, right? Also as an underdog. So here you have a situation with just like Utah, we, the algorithm is over, uh, apparently compared to the odds makers, the algorithm is over predicting San Antonio. Still doesn't think they win this game, but it gives it much, much, much closer than 13 points and it puts it way down here by margin. So I, you, you, you just take San Antonio plus 13 because you don't understand why they're getting 13 points. And if they lose by a ton, so be it. But like, I, why are you, so you're going to take it. So I'm looking now and it is still 13 points and I'm taking it and I'm wondering why. And we'll see if it's a close game. And we're like, that was the easiest money ever. And we're like, okay, why don't we just do that every day? That's a fifth pick. Do we have a sixth pick? The, 
Cavs and the Bulls, super close margin game and injuries for the Cavs. So this has got to be a no pick because it's the same and it, it's a toss up basically and doesn't know. So you don't want toss up games. Or you're going to lose half of your toss up games. The rest of these are not really toss ups based on the, the analysis and the order of the algorithm. So there are only five. We don't create extra picks unless we wanted to throw like a Celtics to win on there on the top. Um, we can actually talk about what that does uh, by, by doing some comparisons here in a second. So now we have five picks, which is 26. So if you spread out a dollar on all of them and five on the end for fun, but let's not talk about the five on the end because I want to show you the true payout, layered payout. Here, this 26 bucks only turns into 186. And you have all favorites. So this is not exciting enough for me. If you tried to hit all of them, 700 bucks on those. That's, that's pretty exciting, actually. But I really don't want to lose one and lose everything and hit go four and one. So what if you do this and bet the fives? Here's almost $400, 370 And you can lose one. And you still double your money. That is starting to feel like a good gambler's wager. Um, and of course, you can have a $30 budget or you could also try to shoot for better ROI instead of hitting the jackpot and do, like I said, like this. Okay. Um, because let's let's up this to $5 a piece. Your $130 wager, which pays $930. But what happens if you lose one? Every time I do this, I curse it. I apologize for doing this for if this is actually the ones that lose. Every time I do this, that's why I'm just going to do all of them. Pretend, pretend like we lose all of them. Okay. Okay, betting gods, go ahead. Mess with that. <laughs> now let's go back for a second. Um, every time I do that, I swear, I, I, it's like I pick the two. That's why I, I don't like to do that. But we're just, hopefully I smeared everything so that the betting gods don't know what to do. Um, let, let's talk again about what happens when you layer this thing out. So the Clippers lose and you still make 147%. The Spurs don't cover because the odds makers supposedly are right and they crushed them. Now you're only losing 30% going three and two, right? Which kind of seems acceptable because three and two means you have a little better day, day than average, but you're, you're trying to really get some analysis to do four and one or better, in which case you double your money or better. So I understand it, you know, and you can go down to all the way to losing three games. And going two and three, and you still at least get 10%, 12% back. So that's kind of why I, I don't do the lower ones sometimes, is I'll restructure this in like this format, like eight, seven, five, or something like that, right? I usually just do one on the end, because I like to see what the one pays. So in this case, the one pays 23 to one. We're trying to hit a 23 to one shot on all five but we're trying to get paid if we don't hit all five. And I would say I'm accepting of losing one game as reasonable variance when we really do this kind of analysis. And hopefully these are extremely strong picks, right? In basketball and in other sports, I'd accept a much higher variance. But in basketball, I'll accept one of these going down and us losing a close one that we couldn't do anything about. Well, if that's the case, then – then how do you structure this to optimally benefit? And, and there's a way to check this. Pretend you did, you know, $100 on this and you bet just the twos. Well, if you lose one of these, and we're try, let's try to lose the best line game, okay? Which is this minus one of four pacers. Here, you still double your money if you bet just the twos. But if you bet just the twos, the best you could do is only 20, 250% on your money. So, well, what about when it's the three round robins? No, <laughs> sorry, the threes, and it's $100. Here you get 5.6, right? Five, 560% on your money if you hit them all. And if you lose that Indiana game, you more than double your money, see? You get 155% back. So threes are better than twos when you only lose one game or get them all right, okay? Well, what about fours? Fours, you win twelve hundred bucks, but if you lose one, wow, you still get back one hundred and thirty percent. That's looking great, Dan, right there. Because I know the fives are not going to be better than this. The fives just you can't do a five. It's a problem. So, 
so the question is, what do you expect to do with these picks and what's acceptable? And I'd say that four and one has to be the bare minimum of what you want to call a good day here. So in that case, you just bet the fours and I'm supposed to do this. With the 30 bucks that I have, I'm supposed to do this. And, and I'll add one on the end because I always like to add one. Now, who cares? It doesn't matter. It's only 20 bucks. So yeah, so I'm going to do this. And I'm going to be content with a four in one day that doubles my money because it's passive income at that point. I will snicker if I lose two or more and I'm like, all right, well, there goes my 30 bucks. And if we somehow win all five, I'm going to be like, that's awesome. Look, I almost, you know, I made, I made more than 11 to one on my money because we went through these five really, really strong picks and we stayed away from everything else that probably will go choppy. You know, the bulls will win, the heat will lose. Um, Milwaukee will blow a game because of injuries and we'll kind of know that or whatever, you know, like, Interesting things will happen on here. Or sorry, what else did we dodge? We dodged, we took Memphis plus five. Me Memphis might be too injured and, and they don't cover the five and a half. It might be one that we lose that that could be stayed away from. But I keep seeing them play with this injury each day. So I assume those people have been out for, some of them have been out for other games or something. They just seem to have a depth in their team that keeps them winning. So I'm willing to take them plus five and a half. So I'm justifying it there. Anyway. That is the just breakdown analysis of all the different things you can do. Of course, you can wager more or less than 30 bucks, but but I would recommend using the, that philosophy that, that I said at the very beginning, I believe, which is you wager what you assume you are going to lose for the day. That is the way to think about it. And then just be ecstatic and happy when you win because you're like, oh my God, I won. And then that's awesome. And then when you lose, you just be like, yeah, I lost again today. That is the way to do this. Um, it, it ends up resulting in profit because you could lose 10 days in a row and then hit this one day and be up if you're wagering the same amount of money every day. And throughout those 10 days, even if you lost in those 10 days, if you didn't lose every single game and one of those days you had a four and one, you'd obviously have gotten some of your money back. So in the long term, you have to give yourself a chance to receive an abnormally high payout in order to weave your way through the variances and the peaks and the troughs that go in with just natural luck and randomness that also goes in to the outcomes of games. Sometimes hit, things hit the rim and go in, sometimes they don't. And while you have a, a longer game and more points to try to iron out the accurate score and the better team winning in basketball, as opposed to other sports like hockey, where the puck goes off the post and in or off the post and out, and it makes a massive difference in scoring or soccer, same thing. Um, those types of games, much more difficult to predict uh, frequently with reliability. Basketball is a better one for this. So it, you're, you're going to get the algorithm just kind of gets things right. I mean, wh what are we at right for the season right now? I know it's retroactively changing scores, so I shouldn't totally say this is complete, but it's saying, 18 and nine, and there's a way to sort this by um by spread covers and stuff like that when I break apart the games. But you can see it's winning with certain teams, like the actually subtotal teams, and see how we're doing with those. Um, like the Celtics, it's picked twice and they won. Golden State, it picked twice and they won one, lost one. Um, it's a cool way of looking at it by team. So like, yeah, Memphis has been winning and I didn't lock in their health percentage in the past. I don't think I do that and I should, which is I should lock in the operating strength from the past uh, in here. And that way we can see what their health was. Ugh, but there are versions I send out every day and we're really starting to get into the weeds and I just don't want to spend all of my time doing this because I can get in the rabbit hole forever with this kind of stuff. And anyway, cool stuff. That's my picks for those that are still here. Uh, if you do the same thing that I do, um, <laughs> I know people who do the exact opposite of what I do every day, but some people do what I say and sometimes it wins and it won't lose forever. <laughs> That's all I can promise you. All right. So good luck, everybody. May all your picks and our picks be winning.